Coming up on Ag Week TV, planting season has gone off super well, but for some, they're planting in dry dirt. It's calving season, we'll take you to a bison ranch. And a new study about weeds in corn and soybeans presents some numbers that should definitely garner farmers' attention. Hello, welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Shauna Olson. We're out here in the Buffalo, North Dakota area on a super windy day. And here, planting has been going on for a couple of weeks. We caught up with Peter Bosch, who says he's been planting in dry ground so far. It's been going uh, really well. We uh, have gotten a, a lot of crop in the ground in a hurry. And right now we're waiting for some rain, but um, it, it's nice to get a lot of stuff in the ground without too much rain at one time, and uh, but now we are getting too dry. Peter Bosch has been farming near Buffalo, North Dakota for the past 25 years. He grew up farming with his dad and then became a registered nurse, not planning to come back to the farm, but then he did. I continued to work a little bit after I started farming, but not very long, and then when we had our first child, then I quit everything and just started farming, and so Okay. It's basically been the best thing I've ever done. I mean, my, you know, back in the 80s when my dad farmed, it was some tough going, you know, yeah. but since I've farmed, it's just been, it's been really good. We've That's had awesome. a lot of good years and, and uh, everything's changed. I mean, insurance has changed to help us and, you know, it, of course, the oil boom in the, the last five, six years or eight years of production of, you know, good prices. He says this planting season has started off well. This is probably the fastest pace I've ever had simply because we didn't, once we started we didn't have any rain. So uh, it's basically been eight or nine days of straight planting and um, you can get a lot done in a day. So, so I have all my corn planted and now we have about three days, three or four days of soybeans left. But now he says he needs rain. This is the driest that I've ever planted soybeans into. I, I planting probably two inches and I've never been that deep before. So. We're trying to plant to some moisture. Bosch says they're off to a great start and he's happy to soon be done planting. The only issue this year is the wind. So it's been, uh, I think, more windy than usual. We've had some tough time putting our chemical down for the pre-plant chemical and the pre-emerge chemical. So that, that's probably been my biggest problem this year. In the Dakotas, Minnesota, and Montana, planting is farther along than the average. Historically, most corn and soybeans are in the ground by the end of May. But this year, that happened by the middle of the month for most in the region. The Ag Statistics Service also says sugar beet planting was wrapped up in North Dakota and Minnesota by May 8th. Jonathan Knudsen has more on this spring's planting. The upper Midwest is an awfully big place. Generalizing about the weather is always risky. But overall, weather conditions have been excellent and planting is off to one of the best starts in recent memory. Anytime, I think, when you're in the northeastern part of the state and you get in in April and get as much in as we, we did, I think it's, it's, uh, it's a, a pretty good year. Even though it's been cool, uh, we've had a couple of rain events, but it's gone awfully well. Yeah, we've had probably two in a row here. Last year was pretty decent, uh, getting in early and, and probably a little bit smoother than what this spring has been. But, but as far as the spring goes, I mean, it's been pretty phenomenal as far as weather and stuff going here. and It's been a lot of crop that's been socked in the ground the last week here. All of the crop isn't in the ground yet, and of course it's still months from harvest. But at least for now, the outlook for the 2016 crop is very promising. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. For now, moisture isn't a major concern across the upper Midwest, according to the Ag Statistics Service. But many farmers will tell you they're just a week or two away from drought, especially if it gets hot. This week's Crop Stop takes us to Napoleon in south central North Dakota, where Mickle Pates found 77-year-old Clarence Mock spraying weeds. 
Mock says planting is progressing, but they could use some rain. He says most of the wheat is in around the area, and there's a lot of corn being planted. But Mock says low prices may force him to quit farming, and his banker says it could be five years before the farm economy turns around. I can't cash flow because I'm getting less for my wheat now than I got in 1975. We were a plow plant operation here in 1975. We sprayed 2,4-D or MCPA and for three bucks an acre. I spent 27 last year on no-till to spray my wheat. So what's but that? I'm only getting 440 for it about compared to 475. I'm depleting my net worth by staying in it. But I, I need 45 bushel wheat. I need uh, 1,800 pounds of canola and 1,500 pounds of sunflowers to make it come out. If I don't get them, I don't know what. Even if he does quit farming, Mock won't retire. He's owned the bowling alley, Napoleon, for 45 years. Coming up on Ag Week TV, it's bison calving season. We'll take you to Eagle Valley Bison Ranch next. How did we become the region's largest independent seed company? By taking a very simple but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed. Stand tall. Total Ag Industries is the leader in total control. Their custom-built fertilizer systems are the crown jewel of the Total Ag lineup. Total Ag systems come with a fully customizable fill system, and the variable rate hydraulic drive system works with John Deere displays for real-time feedback and complete fertilizer monitoring. Total Ag's field-tested design allows precise control and accurate application in your fields for better yields and more profit. Contact Total Ag by phone or visit TotalAg.com. When there's work to be done, the right equipment matters. Get it at your Work Gear HQ, home of economy. We are North Dakota's number one source for Muck, Ariat, Rocky, Timberland, Keen, and Wolverine work boots. Soft and steel toe, pull on and lace up. You need them? We've got them at the guaranteed lowest price. Today and every day at your Work Gear HQ. Home of economy, where your dollar buys more. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Hey, I'm Tyler Perry. Do you know what hunger in America looks like? Well, it has many faces, and 16 million of those belong to children. Yet billions of pounds of food go to waste each year, and this is unacceptable. You can be a part of the solution. Join us in supporting the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks, which rescues our surplus foods and provides meals to many families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org today. Together we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Raising bison, as you can imagine, can be a challenging job. But for one North Dakota rancher, it's a heck of a lot of fun and always an adventure. We caught up with Randy Locker of Eagle Valley Bison Ranch during calving season. I always wanted to get something exotic with a brain. And that's exactly what Randy Locker got. I had one little shelf back there. Snow was about that high and I couldn't get it. And they stood on that shelf, they turned and they went up into the trees over the fence. See, that was the highest spot in the hole. That's the only area I couldn't get clean. They're smart. He started his bison herd with six 20 years ago, and it grew. Eagle Valley Bison Ranch has 100 head. This is Snuffy. Yeah, he wants to get by here. Oh, wow. Locker is close to his herd. It's funny to watch him. This is a special time of year. It's calving season. And how many do you plan to have on the ground? I suppose this round will probably bring probably 30-some. There'll be some fall calvers also. You know, it depends on, because the bulls are out there all the time, so there will be some fall calvers. So we could end up with a pretty good shot of calves this year. 
Okay. It's a good problem to have. They're mighty and fast, and right now, worth a good chunk of change. The market is very strong. The calves are like gold. Last fall, they were running, the bull calves were running for over $5 a pound, which is pretty unheard of. We got a first-hand look at the fresh, new faces from his giant payloader. You know, they always look so cute until you, uh, you get them into the chute or something like that, if you got to do something with them. It's like a rotary hammer. If you're in close quarters with them, they'll start hitting you in the ankles, and they just <laughs> like this until you take their head and push it down on the ground and stop them. You know, they're uh, even at a day old, they'll take you. You know, they'll charge you, the tail comes up in the air, and they come right after you, you know, so it's... And it's fun to see that because then they got a will to live. Calving season is Locker's favorite time. It also brings interesting stories of these animals and their might. Because we couldn't get the calf away from the mother. And all of a sudden she started hitting the tractor and she was hitting the tires. She was so mad. So the tractor's like this. Like, Locker says their power and stamina never cease to amaze him. Bulls are closer to 2,000 pounds and that they can jump around like a mule deer. You know, it's just, it's amazing how strong they have to be so they can get their head above something and then they'll just use their hind legs and then they're just hopping over. Hop right over. Yeah, I've had them hop out of some pens over here. You know, we had a herd bull in one day and, and I suppose the pen was probably, I suppose about that high. They can jump, it's, everybody says, you know, six foot fence or better and we go to eight because you get two feet of snow in the wintertime, all of a sudden you only get six feet of fence left. He says for the most part, the animals are quiet it's when he has to handle them that attitudes can change. Some days it gets pretty crazy, you know, you get in some tight situations. You know, you can grab the calf, pull them up across the gas tank, and wow. everything works good. You get gone because you got the whole herd chasing you. Even the, the oh. non mothers will chase you too. He says he's learned to be safe over the years. Some lessons come faster than others. Whatever you learned about Cadley said, forget it all and start over when you raise buffalo. You don't throw a gate at him because the gate comes back about 10 times as fast, usually. <laughs> So, <laughs> so you learn that kind of early on. This what is an adventure every day, Randy. It is. <laughs> yeah, it is. They are a lot of fun. So fun, Randy has no plans of getting out anytime soon. All in all, if you, you watch what you're doing, use your head. I mean, they're easy to raise. It's just a cool ride. You can buy Locker's Bison meat at some local grocery stores. You can also order it online at ecovalleybison.com or even stop by their farm near Christine. Some growers are getting some badly needed rain. We'll tell you where and how much next in your agri-weather forecast. And later, a new study shows farmers face shocking crop losses if weeds aren't properly controlled. It's hard not to take pride in what I do. I think everyone here sees the value in what they're creating. We work hard to make every window a true Minkota window. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. How much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? North Country Marketing is your weed and mosquito control headquarters. Carrying the Easy Rider ATV mounted sprayer, pole type ATV sprayers, three point sprayers with six foot to 30 foot booms, utility vehicle mounted sprayers, 48 inch pole type weed rollers, and the new 72 inch model. We also carry walk behind weed rollers and estate sprayers. North Country Marketing has the sprayers you need for this season and we ship anywhere. Contact North Country Marketing toll free or visit us at northcountrymarketing.biz. Northland Outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots. All across the Northland, there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell. We're going to find those stories and share them with everyone. Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. 
This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work, and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. What I believe sets us apart is the way our products are crafted. Every frame has to have a precision to it that you don't see in other brands. It's what makes it a true Minn Kota window. Weather portion of Ag Week now. We're starting off with a new map. This is the NOAA Crop Moisture Index. It's not really new. This is actually a very old index. goes back for decades. Recent weeks, we've been showing you the Soil Moisture Index out of the University of Washington. That's more of an immediate reflection of, of a recent rainfall and how much water is in the topsoil at the moment. That's a model thing. This is also a computer model, but this is more of a long drawn out. This is more over about a three or four week period. So the idea here is you're not going to see anything as extreme. You'll see a little bit of green over the Sioux Falls area, western Iowa, much of Nebraska. That means the soils are quite wet in that area. Uh, Not necessarily in flood, but quite wet. Most of the United States is actually in white right now, meaning it's about average, basically about average, which doesn't mean exactly perfect at all. It just means that we're not in a drought in the northern plains and we're certainly not any too wet. We're in that type of typical spring where we need some timely rain. So let's see what the weather pattern is going to do for us. We've had some cool weather this weekend into the northern plains with some areas of freezing temperatures. Might be the last of that as the northern part of the jet stream is going to start fading away and the main jet will shift a little bit further to the south over the next few days. Toward the end of the week, I'm expecting a ridge of high pressure to be building up. That'll bring us some warm warm temperatures as the week goes along. And as usually happens when you get into summertime, the subtropical jet stream is really starting to fade away and becoming much less of a factor, certainly up here in the northern plains. So what are we going to look at for rain now? Okay, first of all, this coming week, the, the uh, midweek of May, it still looks like the main storm track is going to be further south from Texas over to the southeastern states. Plenty of rainfall down here. This will come in hit and miss thunderstorms. So it's not like it's all going to be a soak, but there will be plenty of stormy weather in the south. Some of the shower activity will shift northward up into the Midwest. It's not all going to be uh, great moisture, but there will be some scattered showers, especially into the eastern part of the northern plains. Montana's looking fairly dry, and the west coast is looking fairly dry for this week. Next week, now we're talking really the last full week of May. Still think the storm track will be in the central part of the country, but because of the amplitude, the waviness of the pattern, I do expect a storm system to curve northward up into the northern plains, upper Midwest sometime next week. That's a week and a half from now, and I don't know how far west it'll go, and I certainly can't guarantee it, but it looks like we could get at least some decent rains, might be in the form of showers or thunderstorms. Looks fairly dry along the east coast and the southwest is settling into its typical summertime pattern. So what are we looking at overall as we look at the end of May? Probably the last of the frost unless we get something crazy happening in June in the far northern parts of the area. And it will be turning warmer as we go through this week into next week. That brings up the chance for some more thunderstorms. Main storm track staying south, but I do see a pretty good shot of moisture into the plains next week. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, held bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust. As honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins. With proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you, no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about superior. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable. 
and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1 800 811 2580. We believe in a fair and balanced approach to state and federal regulation. Proposed changes to OSHA's anhydrous ammonia policy, EPA's Waters of the U.S., the Clean Air Act, and endangered species are a few examples of what we are facing. The one size approach doesn't work for North Dakota. Agriculture Commissioner Doug Goring wants to work with you to protect our state. Go to our website to see the latest issues that affect not only agriculture today, but for future generations. Ag Week TV, sponsored by Peterson Farm Seed. Here's a number that may shock you. Corn and soybean farmers in the U.S. and Canada would lose $43 billion a year if they couldn't control weeds with herbicide and other methods. That's according to a new study by a group of weed scientists. The study's lead author, Anita Dilley, says... About half of all corn and soybean acres would be lost if weeds can't be controlled. Dilly, who is a weed ecology professor at Kansas State, says the important thing for farmers to get from this study is that they need to continue working with multiple weed control strategies. Sometimes this is tied directly to herbicide resistance, that if all of a sudden the weed population becomes resistant to weeds and a person continues to use that same herbicide, they're going to lose significant amounts of yield. But if we also lose other options for weed control and, and our weeds are allowed to go, that they will cause significant yield losses. So again, thinking of multiple practices to make sure that there isn't a, a major weed escape because there is just such still such a huge impact, um, even with all the technologies that we have for growing a great crop. Dilly says the impact of uncontrolled weeds on several other crops, including wheat and dry beans, will also be analyzed. Farmers in two North Dakota counties are trying to prove an error in a farm program cost them thousands of dollars. The FSA says not enough farmers returned crop surveys in those counties, so payments were miscalculated. Michael Pates talked to one farmer in Logan County who says the Ark County snafu cost his operation $36,000. Shauna, as experts and farmers look into the Lemoore and Logan County farm program called Ark County, they're not liking what they see. As we talk to farmers and our neighbors, what troubles me is that so many of us did not even get the survey. And yes, I know a lot of farmers do not take kindly to those surveys and a lot of them do go in the garbage. And then you take the fact of a number that doesn't line up with what everybody's crop insurance uh, APH data says there's a disparity in the numbers and we're just asking for this to be rectified. Farmers that feel stung by what they consider faulty yield data in 2014 hope the USDA will fix the Art County program going forward. We're an average size farm. $36,000 no matter how you slice it is a lot of money but on a year when things are tight it's a big deal. It's a tractor payment. It may be the difference between renewal and non-renewal. Um, it's some family living. It's huge. This is Michael Pates at Streeter, North Dakota for Ag Week TV. Members of Congress from farm states have been studying the problem, and Herbley says he's cautiously optimistic it can be fixed. A local expert says farm-related hearing loss is a big concern. Vanessa Lian is a Doctor of Nursing practice student at NDSU and will graduate soon. She'll become a family nurse practitioner next month. Lian grew up on a farm near Milner, North Dakota, and researched hearing loss in farmers for her dissertation. She says her father has suffered farm-related hearing loss and is concerned about younger relatives. She says almost all farmers in her study had some sort of hearing loss. I always like to put it into perspective. Our normal conversation occurring right now is about 60 decibels. So any exposure to noises over 85 decibels on a regular basis is what causes damage to hearing. A riding lawnmower is at least about 90 to 95 decibels. We know that that causes hearing damage when you're exposed to it at long periods of time. 
She says it's important to wear protective hearing while working with loud equipment. She says earmuffs work the best. She also suggests keeping your health care provider in the loop to help with prevention. Ahead on Ag Week TV, saying goodbye to one of the nation's top ag teachers. How did we become the region's largest independent seed company? By taking a very simple but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed. Stand tall. It's time to demand more. With Micro Essentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only Micro Essentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Micro Essentials, get more from every acre. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Northland Outdoors is about so much more than the biggest fish or the hottest hunting spots. All across the Northland, there are amazing people with incredible stories to tell. We're going to find those stories and share them with everyone. Join us each and every week as we explore the Northland and experience some of the most exciting outdoor adventures in the country right here in our own backyard. This is Northland Outdoors. North Dakota soybean farmers put food on tables all over the world, including their own. That's why it's important that we produce healthy, safe, affordable food. It's also important that we keep up with demand. Today's farmer feeds 155 people per year. Compare that to a farmer only two generations ago who produced enough for just 26. Most North Dakota farms are still family owned and operated because our care of the land that feeds the world today is our children's legacy for tomorrow. A popular and award-winning FFA advisor and ag teacher is retiring. Terry Reekman has been at McCook Central High School in Salem, South Dakota for 32 years. When he started at the school, it was about to eliminate the FFA program, but he developed it into a nationally recognized program. Reekman has coached 17 students into national winners and is considered a leader to other FFA advisors across the state. He's not stepping away entirely. He's currently president of the National Association of Ag Educators. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.